Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And How goes it? I, I'm, I'm going to not dig today, but dig yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Can you dig it? Um, I saw this really cool thing on YouTube a minute ago, I, and I should have had you look at it before we started, honestly. Um, but someone in my Discord linked. Have you seen this guy that is made who wants to be a YouTuber, and it's like, who wants to be a millionaire? I have not. So there's this guy... Uh, I can't remember his name now. Um, is he's it, made is this. Is it Regist YouTube Yes, that's it. That's that's him. You know, you know. I, I assumed. You know, it's um, what else would his name be? <laughs> uh, he's made this series called "Who Wants to Be a YouTuber," and it's uh, all the way up to a million subscribers. So if you can get the questions right all the way up to a million subscribers, then you've made it. Um, you get that 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 million subscriber play button in the mail. Um, Wait, what? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Well, you know, whenever you get a million subscribers on YouTube, you get that play button, right? Million subscriber button. Yeah, well, that's what he says you're gonna get if you if you may if you make it all the way to the end and his questions thing. Um, but it's got to be thousands of videos. This thing he's got going on because there's lifelines and everything. So like you get you start off with the one question and it's worth a hundred subscribers. Um, so question one, it's like, what's the God? What was it? I don't even remember what the first question was. Like one of them was like, what's the first video ever uploaded to YouTube? Do you know what that one is? The first video ever uploaded to YouTube? Was it yeah. like some dude doing something like just videotaping his own sport uh, like RV or something like that? No, it was uh, it was I think it was a guy that created YouTube. I think it was I think he was with his kid at the zoo. Uh, I know it's called me at the zoo. That's the name of it. Um, so I did happen and I got that question right. Um, that was like the second or third question. I'm spoiling it for anyone that wants to do this thing. Um, <laughs> but so but uh, there's lifelines too. So, like, if you're on question number one and you have and you want to get a lifeline, there's um, poll the commenters, fifty fifty, and phone a YouTuber are the three uh, things. So, like, let's say you're on question one and you decide you need to do that. It take you, you click on the thing. It takes you to another video, and it's right there on question one. He repeats question one, and then he takes away like I said, you did fifty fifty. He takes away two of them. So you already you got to think about this. Either that's already two videos he had to make just to do this. Um, but if let's say you knew the answer to question one, uh, it's embedded links inside the video to answer like A, B, C, or D. And so that takes you to another video. So there's a video for all four answers, possible answers. Uh, and so there's like he had to record four videos. Three of them were saying, you guessed this. And the answer is wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, and so like he also like, so like, let's say, let's say you use the lifeline. Because I, I did this a minute ago. Um, so like you... Um, and by the way, I went out at sixteen thousand. That's as far as I got. I used I used all three of my lifelines, and uh, I did, I failed the thirty-two thousand subscriber question, and so I'm only worth sixteen thousand subscribers. Um, but uh, after you use your lifeline, like after I use fifty-fifty, the next question, since like it's like it's like one of those choose your own adventure books. Like he had to he record a video inside the story. He's like, you've already used your first lifeline. Um, so like he made a video for each of these things where if you'd used a lifeline or used two lifelines or so it's got to be like thousands of videos to go through this whole thing. It's uh it's pretty wild yeah, that's the amount pretty, of effort he put in. That's pretty cool. How many uh views does each of the videos that you got? The you very have? first one, I think this just came out. The very first one has 30 35,000. Uh once I got pretty deep and I'd already used three lifelines and I was towards the last questions they only had like 150 viewers but that's basically people that went the same path as me and got to that that far you know what i mean right right um, so those only had like 150 views but i still thought it was pretty wild that uh someone put this much effort into this thing yeah no that's a like that's, that's pretty cool little niche concept yeah i thought so I thought it was going to be like some kind of gag video whenever it first got linked to my Discord. It was like, who wants to be a YouTuber? And it's like, it sucks to be you. They're demonetizing all the videos or something like that. That's kind of what I expected the whole thing to be. Uh, well, even when you brought it up, I assumed it was some joke of right. some type. Yeah, that was a real real thing. It's, it's well done. Uh, so, how's your week been? Do you so, got anything to report? Well, I do, actually. And it's, it's interesting. Um, somebody got a letter in the mail. It was not me, however. I was going to say, I'm sure lots of people get letters in the mail. <laughs> yeah, I, I have not got a letter in the mail ever. Nobody wants to write me. No, I... Uh, some some math. Mel so, <laughs> what did I just say? Something about, came out all something about doing math. Please, <laughs> no yes, please send <laughs> meth some gel or something like that. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> you guys heard the man send meth gel to it. Uh, um, no, I expect that I will get one very soon, but this was somebody else showed me theirs, and I will read it to you right when we, we get in bed here. I think it will make hmm. you laugh. It's a bit of a story. <clears throat> mm. <laughs> I gotta prepare for this. It says, Dear person's name here. We are ready That's to a notify. weird way to start a letter. Yeah, I know. It's weird. I wanted to make it really generic. They made sure everybody <laughs> could get the same letter. No, obviously it has the person's name that it was sent to on there. Yeah. Um, it says, we are writing to notify you of a recent security incident on April 30th of 2018. Uh-huh. Take a while oh, God. Is it, is it about your the site that you went Involving to? Involving your Board of Nursing application for license <laughs> renewal. <laughs> We okay. determined that your information, your personal information, including your name, social security number, and other identifying information was inadvertently disclosed to other nurses who renewed their license via the application <sighs> portal. I thought you said the social security number wasn't visible. So it wasn't when I did it, and I don't think it was when she did it, this person who uh, sent me their, their thing because, you know, I complained to her. She's our regulatory person, so she's the one that actually gets has regular contact with the D.C. Department of Health, and they oh, they haven't written back to her about any of the, the complaints that she brought up either, but I was asking her about it, because we did it the same day. The very first day they opened up this brand new license portal, we both did it, so I don't know if... And April 30th is what kind of throws me off as well, because they actually didn't even open up the renewal. Oh, no, no, I think it was April 30th. I think it was April 30th that I did my license renewal as well. So, but, yeah. <laughs> Who'd a freaking thought, right? I mean, oh man. So, do you think? I, I what I wonder is, is this your fault? I so I've I thought about that possibility because it's I I don't know when that video came out though. Because you got to remember, we recorded it right after I did it, but it didn't release for. Well, you did tweet about it though immediately. I mean, I mean, not 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 like the you video. Are, you are but I correct. Mean, I did I did tweet about it, but that tweet still only had like you know five views or something like that. Well, you don't know how many views it had. You know how many likes and re- stuff it had. Retweets, right? I mean, but all well, it takes is one person, the right person, to see it, right? I, I mean, I'm hoping that right person was the board of nursing to alert them to <laughs> their shitty ass system that they need to get fixed. Uh, yeah, but yeah. The, I, I just, because the reason I even know that this exists is this person shot me a text message earlier and said, did you get a letter today too from the Department of Health? And I was like, <laughs> no. You know, and they, I, I, the site's down, right? Have they brought it back yet? Uh, so you know what? Let me look right now because I kept looking and besides the transaction ID, the um, the it still showed the email addresses last time I looked. Uh, DCDOH nursing license renewal. Let's see if I can get to the right renewal portal. Because they still have links up. Yeah, they still have the links up on their site to the old one. So you got to do it through like a, a link that they just sent out to everybody in their database, which was kind of ridiculous. Uh, so let me go into here. Which is really screwed up that you have to log in to the their portal and then you have to still fill out your information. What? Hmm. Is the site just down now? Uh, it's not letting me log in. Oh, there we go. I must have just been typing stuff wrong. So let me go into the renewal application here. And let me just jump down to the lookup table. Lookup table still as of now, has first name, last name, and email address. So, yeah. Nothing's really changed. No. So, like, I don't understand. The only thing that changed is, like I said, that transaction ID piece. They took out the search for it. So, now you have to, like, write down your transaction ID before you go to the next screen because you can't look at everybody's failed or successful payments. But when it's saying that, you know... They disclose the social security numbers in that to people. I'm curious on, like, was at one point, maybe an hour before I jumped onto the site to look, the social security number visible as well? Or did they literally have some type of 
breach. Well, I, well you know, I want to. I would say that, except this letter explicitly states says other nurses. Yeah, it said. Uh, but they could be down personal information, it, right? including your name, social security number, and other identifying information, was inadvertently disclosed to the other nurses who had renewed their license via the application portal. Yeah, that's a weird way of putting it. So, I mean, so, yeah, it sounds like, unless they're trying to lie and cover it up, that it wasn't a breach, but they, they put the information out there on accident, which does make me wonder. And what do they consider your personal information? Because if, as it stands right now, after people are receiving a letter talking about the fact that this happened, is name and email address not considered personal information? Right. Right. It should be, you would think. I would definitely, especially like when let's say you're dealing with the, you know, uh, an organization that deals with healthcare that deals with HIPAA and it's even, I didn't know this. It's a HIPAA violation to even, uh, present somebody's medical record number in just the number format is technically a HIPAA violation because from a medical record number, if you had the right other codes, you could go and find out who that person was. Really? So literally a number is not supposed to be disclosed without appropriate permissions because wow. yet you're going to sit there and tell me that my, my name and email address is perfectly acceptable to have. Out I mean, there. to a lot of people, they don't realize what a big deal that kind of is. Well, and it's and and like I said before, in general, I don't really I don't hide my email address. I don't really care. You know, it's a personal email that I know gets a lot of spam and stuff. But when you have such a targeted list of right. you know, DC nurses in the District of Columbia, you could do so much with that for marketing purposes. Companies make their living off of selling people's email addresses to places to conduct marketing. Right. You know, I just. I'm curious to know what was different, what, if anything, they have changed. Because this letter even goes on to say, the Department of Health takes a responsibility to protect your information very seriously. Therefore, when we discovered the unauthorized disclosure, we took action to immediately address the issue. We have fully investigated <laughs> the incident and are taking steps to lessen any potential harm to you along with protecting your information against further breaches and, you know, some free fraud stuff, uh, fraud monitoring, you know, type deals. Additional information on how you can access these services will be forthcoming. Uh, I just, I, and <laughs> and when this is a government agency that is the one that's the source of the leak. I mean, what recourse do you have to as a as a citizen who potentially had my information breached by a government agency? How can you raise a formal complaint <laughs> against a government agency? to take different action like is that even possible yeah yeah that's a good question i mean you remember whenever like all the people in the military social security number stuff oh, yeah. got breached it was it was it wasn't just the military it was the office of the opm the office of personnel management for the government is what got hacked right right all of them got free uh social security new like new social security numbers oh my wife didn't I huh. mean, yes, she did. If you have her social security number, it's a different one. Don't, don't, <laughs> it's don't change. That anymore. Uh, I mean, that wasn't an offer to her because she, she was part of that breach as well because she worked with the government at the time. Huh. I mean, that's what I was told. Because uh, remember when I got doxxed or whatever, I tried to get a new social security number and I got declined. I mean, no, I didn't. Um. <laughs> <laughs> did I really? Uh, uh, I, thought yeah. they made, I thought they made it a thing now, uh, like about five or so years ago, where you were allowed to get a new social security number if you felt it. You have to age. have a good, a valid reason. Um, and, and you have to be able to prove it with like um, FBI reports and all this other stuff. And I, I, there wasn't enough for them to 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 justify my mind to get a new one. I wonder who sits in an office and makes that decision. I don't know, but the way they described it to me, your old one's linked to it. So if someone uses your old one, it just links to your new one. So it doesn't really matter. I don't think it does. I mean, I maybe I misunderstood what I was being told, but the way it, des it was described to me, it really was basically bullshit. So I didn't, I didn't feel like it was going to do a whole lot, anyways. Honestly, so. But yeah, that's uh. Yeah, I just wanna, interesting. I I want to know now, like, as somebody in clinical informatics who works in the district where this happens, who deals with security and privacy issues. I should somehow have the right to be like, you are the board that governs me. You need to bring in, you know, this type of service or this, that, the other. Like, I just, 
you think somebody should be able to tell them other than, you know, the 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 government who made this terrible, terrible, terrible application right. to keep it going. Like, if we had breached like that, we would get fined. Right. That's a good point. Maybe maybe you could sue. Seems like that's what everyone does, right? I mean, it does. And, and, like, is that what you would do as a private citizen when the government's the one who does, does it? If you can't find them, in theory, you just sue them for what you Probably. would get fined right? for? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you should talk to a lawyer. I also, I wonder if there's some random law on the books that allows for, like, the finding of leaked information. If there's some random law or policy somewhere that talks about the government uh, breaching and there being an automatic, like, fine to the individual associated with it or something like that. I doubt it, but, I mean, I'm just saying. Maybe. It's, it's possible. I don't know. You know, whenever all that parking debacle stuff happened with me, I sent the, the um, I sent them an invoice for parking, and they just paid it. <laughs> nice. They didn't I was gonna send him an, an invoice for inconvenience. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if I get might, a letter. I first. mean, it might work. A lot of companies don't like. I mean, I I feel like after that happened, I felt like I should just start sending places invoices and see what happens. <laughs> just send it to their accounts payable department. And yeah, like, no, for hope, real. Hope I it mean, just goes it, on through. Right, because I I bet I bet there's a lot of cases where it would, and you wouldn't expect it, but it would. Um, because they don't know, you know, there's p people just sending out checks. I mean, I don't think that's illegal. If you do a legal invoice to someone and they, they're dumb enough to pay it, I don't think that's against the law. Uh, I mean, well, I, I, you're right. I guess it can't be because I've been invoiced by even places that I have services through completely incorrectly before. And that doesn't seem to be illegal. That just seems to be a since I caught it, they basically took took care of it. But they were had I not caught it, they would have just fully accepted my money. Right. And I don't think just because they accepted my money or even if they just sent that to me, I don't think I can, like, bring them up on some type of, you know. I'm in bed, by the way. I'm heading over there. Okay. On any type of. I didn't insurance. say anything. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's people would have to pay you. I mean, I guess they could probably ask for a refund if it was just bullshit. And then, I, I mean, they probably could take you to we, court. We that... accidentally paid you money. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness, well, look at I all these creepers. I accidentally spent the money you paid me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. wouldn't that be literally just as good of an excuse? Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on what you invoiced them for, right? If you invoiced them for like some kind of service or something, and you, then you didn't actually had provided it, they might be able to take you to some kind of small claims and get it back. But I bet a lot of companies wouldn't even go through that trouble. <laughs> but like literally in my case, I don't think invoice. they could do anything because they, they had parked and I did invoice them and they did pay it so i mean i provided that service that i invoiced them for <laughs> invoice them for the product of existing <laughs> yeah yeah if they paid it then i am apparently the, the man who controls existence yeah like i don't know like i don't know like i've done stuff for like microsoft or even once for twitch where they were like all right just send us an invoice and so i did and then they paid and i wondered after that i was like what if i could just send another invoice like yeah. they just pay that too <laughs> here's the thing though as a person who like if i let's say we're at the extra life charity or whatnot and they said hey jeff we need you to run out to the store and pick up you know this 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 that and the other and i do all that on my own personal credit card because they say uh at the end i'll oh, just invoice us we'll take care of it i wouldn't know how to make an invoice well that's what you know what i did i went to google docs and i got like a template <laughs> yeah because i was like, like invoice you what the fuck does that yeah, look like i, I, I mean run, I'm, i don't I, run a company like I'm, I'm i'm my own i'm my own company i don't have to invoice myself yeah. right i you know what i've had to invoice frontier the people that make planet coaster before for ubers and stuff and i didn't have to provide them any receipts or anything i could have told them anything they just paid it so yeah, I don't I don't know how I this mean, shit works, man. I yeah. feel like you can just make shit up. I filled out reimbursement forms before, but they don't call those invoices. Well, yeah, th in my case, these were always called invoices. But I mean, I have a template for it now because I think the first one was Microsoft, right? <laughs> because my side business of invoicing everybody, I <laughs> right? Yeah. Can. I do a lot of invoicing now. You see, <laughs> I mean, that uh, would like be those patent that would be the strangest scam to just try. Like, there's people who try to scam you by claiming that they'll sell you a product that they never intend on selling you or whatever. But literally, right. just send out invoices for work that you didn't do. Make <laughs> the invoice even not even say that you gave them work. It was just an invoice for some generic right thing. services and, rendered or something yeah. like that 
Yeah. Or service is not yeah. rendered. Even to say right now, service is not <laughs> rendered. And see if, if you start getting paid out right. by companies. Uh, <laughs> service is not rendered. You send, send out a thousand of these a day if you even get a hit back on one of them for a couple hundred right. bucks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a, it's a no-lose situation here. I feel. Well, except for postage. But postage for the first right. time has gone down recently. So, I mean. It has? Uh, yeah, didn't it drop like two cents uh, sometime at the end of last year? Really? Yeah. I didn't know we could do that. I thought postage only went up. Which is so funny because that means all those people ha- had that brilliant idea years ago of trying to buy up forever stamps. Oh, yeah, forever stamps. What? And then... I didn't know that postage could go down. Is this the? Is that like a precedent? Has that ever happened before? Uh, no, I think it was the first time. Let me actually look that up because that was a that was really interesting when it happened. Uh, U.S. postage price um, changes. I just want to see if I can see all the changes. So September twenty fifth, twenty thirteen, a three three cent increase. Um, here's the history of it. Additional dollar sixty three thirty five. Oh, it's twenty. It looks like if I'm reading this right, I don't. This is really weird. A postcard rate or a letter rate? Oh, so it went back up again, apparently. But uh, April 17th, 2011, it was 44 cents. January 22nd, 2012, 45 cents. Uh, January 27th, 2013, 46 cents. January 26th, 2014, 49 cents. May 31st, 2015, 49 cents. April 10th, 2016, 47 cents. Wow. Wow. Two cents off. And then it went back up to 49 cents, back up to 50 cents. But let me look at what huh. this footnote is. On they should leave it at 50 cents for a while. That's a good good round number. You know, good good two quarters. U.S. postage decrease. First class mail letters will, that's another increase. Postage price is set to go down and then the USPS isn't happy. This was an article from the from 2016 about it. And that cost them apparently two billion dollars. Jeez, why 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 did we drop the price of postage? I, I don't know if it was the, if maybe they were trying to uh, sell more stamps. Uh, yeah, because they just had were losing out on on money. I mean, the post office is doing terribly, but that's not to be unexpected in this. I mean, I understand this is Amazon's fault. Yeah. Yes. Completely Amazon's fault, which is so funny because Amazon employs the Postal Service to do weekend deliveries. Do they? Yeah, I have. I a, wondered uh, why stuff came on uh, Sundays. Yeah, I have USPS truck showing up at my house a lot on Sundays, and at first I got yeah. really confused. Then I found out it was uh, uh, it's because Amazon like contracts them out to do work on that day that they're they're closed. So it's technically huh. giving not the USPS itself, but the U- well, maybe probably it probably goes to the USPS as a contract. But those employees are now getting more. You know, money or hours. I or wondered why yeah. suddenly I was getting stuff on Sunday, and yeah. but it was only always Amazon stuff. But I didn't understand. I was like, "Wait, how? How is this happening? They're closed." Yep, huh. they uh, opened it up on Sundays for Amazon. So I don't quite understand how the whole it's Amazon's fault. It's in general, if the USP, USPS is doing bad, it's the general concept of the way we do things now. The United States Postal Service is a horrible service for packages for the most part. It's usually more expensive than going through like FedEx, UPS, or you know DHL, um, and especially when the co- companies have like contracts for these companies. Nobody likes to send their standard, you know, freight type items, quote unquote, through United States Postal Service, and less people send the letters anymore. That is why people use the United States Postal Service, in my opinion. Letters, postcards, well, I mean- envelopes. I think that a lot of it is every business is trying to get you to go paperless when it comes to bills. So, and a lot of places will give you a discount. Oh, like true. I get a discount on my car insurance and all those things because I've gone paperless. That's true. Um, and honestly, I mean, it was just like it wasn't even a save us money on postage. It was save the world, um, kind of thing. You know what I mean? That was the campaign so to go paperless. Are you saying that the United States Postal Service is attempting to destroy the world? I think that is their entire goal. Oh, I it's, never thought about it. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. It was the perfect cover until <laughs> Amazon. Until Amazon. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we've been hearing about the Amazon rainforest all this time, right? Oh, dun, my God. Dun, dun. It's all coming together. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do find it funny though that I can save money by going paperless, which is great. But there's still a few random companies that I have to pay a service fee to to pay my bills online. What I hate is the companies that want to only do a wire transfer and not take my credit oh, card. Fuck that. I I or not not just not necessarily why, but they they, they want they, they want, want your to check routing bank. numbers. Yes, yeah, because yeah, there's a like, couple like, like my, the water my, my company power company out here. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, my power company does it. My water company takes my credit card. Like I want to pay with everything through PayPal because I get cash back on my debit card when I use my PayPal debit card. <laughs> I used to get a, uh, you know, the I, I'm one of those credit card type junkies who will get the credit cards for the perks. That's why I've had. Yeah, you know, I know you are. Yeah. I know you are. But you got really lucky with some of your uh, your plain ones. Not lucky. It's skill. Well, okay, man. yeah, you. It's all about skill. Right, yeah. Um, I've already gotten the Southwest Companion Pass twice. I'm just waiting for my time to be up. Because uh, right now you could actually get it again through the same method that I used. But I'd, I need uh, another month to go by before I can start because it's a two year uh, rule after you first get the bonus. Uh, um, but at the same time, I also want to wait until January because the way the Companion Pass works, you get it for the remainder of the current year and the entire next year. So you want to do it as oh. close to January as possible to start acquiring Got those yeah. points. But uh, in doing that, what I would do is. Find places that I could pay, put, switch all my auto pays over to uh, the credit card, those credit cards, obviously. But then I mm -hmm. found out like my Sprint bill and my Verizon bill for uh, Fios and my, or my, I think it was my Comcast bill at the time. And um, whoever, I had one other bill. You were allowed to pay ahead a certain amount of money. Oh. So I literally just paid like $800 ahead on my Sprint bill. Uh, right, because then you have that many that like because you guys because you got to spend like five thousand or whatever that yeah, number like, is to hit yeah, to get your bonus three thousand to five thousand in a three month period to hit the bonus and so I would just do it to get the bonus quicker make sure I made the you know time frame it's a big hit right. on your wallet right away but as long as you have the cash to like back it up I'm then not right. paying a cell phone bill for the next you know you know X right. number of months and uh and I'm getting that bonus to get those flyer program miles getting free flights and getting uh. You know, companion pass. Right. Yep. I know, I know all about that. So that was my that was my secret to the whole thing was just find the sites that you're allowed to pay ahead on. But that doesn't work when you got a site that only takes stupid checks. Yeah. 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 I really hate. Yeah. Especially when it's all coming from the same place. Like, I don't know if it's it, to me if it's a debit card. I guess yeah. I guess they they do it because of their fees. I mean, I understand why they do it, but the fees are minuscule. Like. In most cases, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a percentage base that they're paying, and it's so it's a it's not so minuscule. I don't know. Credit card companies are probably definitely uh, the way to rule the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you have to deal with debt collection and things like that? Sure, but if you're getting interest from people, you're getting fees just because people are using your system. Right. That's insane. Yeah, I try to basically pay off all credit card at the, every month. Basically, I try not to like carry oh, over. I've I, I don't think I've ever carried a balance. I, I'm sorry, I take that back. There was one time I carried a balance because for some reason my auto pay setting didn't go through like I thought it had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, actually almost canceled my Kroger card over some bullshit where. Um, it, the auto pay didn't go through, and then they tried to, and they charged me a late fee on it. And I was like, "Listen, you can see like five years of of full transaction paid, um, never missed a payment." And I was like, "You, you got to waive this this late fee. It's only thirty bucks or whatever those late fees are, twenty five, something like that." But I was, I just didn't want to. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was late, but they they were right. But I, it's something something aired out, and um, they were like, "No, you got to pay it and everything." And like, I had to like talk to three people to finally get someone to waive it. But I was like, I'm going to cancel my card over this. I'm like, I'm going to stop using it just because I'm out of spite. <laughs> See, I got lucky enough for when I called about it. Uh, the guy was very happy to waive my late fee. And I said, I know I'm late. Does this hit my credit report? Because I'm late on a payment. And he said, it can. Let me take a look. And he looked at a couple things and goes, you're lucky they haven't posted it yet. It doesn't post until tomorrow or whatever. Like the reports go out about it. And he's like, so I wiped it off. No. Uh, and that's what I was worried about is it hitting my credit report. Um, right. I have to say right. I had like late payments and stuff on my card. Yeah. 
Like the money, whatever. Late fee is would be minuscule. It's not like I had, you know, since I don't carry a balance, you know, um, month to month, it's just whatever I spent that month. Right. Oops. It's look, looking a lot more dirty over here. Oh, uh, dirty. Uh, well, you've done you've done a good dirty job. A dirty good. job's done cheap or something. Um. So thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time.